Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to start taking a look at SQL Alchemy and get that set up in our project. And so there's a couple of things that I want you guys to take a look at. So the first thing is, I want you to go to the SQL page. So if you just search for SQL, uh, you'll get to the main page. And then if you want to go to library and then references and then version 1.4, which is the one we're going to use. However, I believe they're going to come out with a version 2.0, which is going to be pretty different. So uh, if you are watching this video in the future, you definitely want to install version 1.4 so that you can follow along with this course. So you can click on that. Uh, and so there's a nice little tutorial you can follow. Uh, and then there's also some reference documentation when it comes to setting up the uh, ORM. So if you click on session, session usage, this will show you how to set up a session. Um, however, if you go to the Fast API documentation as well, uh, Fast API, they've got great documentation. So if you go to the documentation and then select SQL relational databases, this is going to show you how to set it up with SQL Alchemy. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and do a pip install for SQL Alchemy. So we'll do pip install and then SQL Alchemy. Now, guys, I want you to remember that, um, well, first of all, I'm running 1.4.2.3, but the thing is, SQL Alchemy doesn't know how to talk to a database, right? It has all the code for us to write Python. Uh, define all the models and things like that, but it doesn't actually know how to talk to a database. It actually needs a database driver. And so if you take a look at all of the packages that we already installed by doing a pip freeze, right, we, in the last video or in the last section, we installed our Postgres database driver. So whatever database you guys plan to use, so if you want to use a MySQL database with, um, uh, with SQL Alchemy, you have to make sure that you install the underlying driver as well, because ultimately that's what's used to talk to the database. Since we're using Postgres, we need to install this as well. But since we were using it originally in the previous sections, we, had it, we already have it installed. So we don't need to worry about doing that. But keep that in mind, right? SQL has no way to talk to a database. It still needs the underlying driver to communicate with it. And that's usually how all ORMs work. Um, but now that we have that, on, inside our app folder, I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call this database.py. So this is going to ha handle our uh, database connection. And from here, um, what I'm essentially going to do is um, just really follow this documentation. So if you take a look at it right here, uh, we can just copy all of this code right here when it comes to importing statements. So this is just going to import all of this SQL Alchemy code that we want. All right, and then we have to specify a, our connection string. So where is our Postgres database located? And so if you take a look at how we had this set up before using the default Postgres database driver, right, we pass it into this connect function. However, uh, a lot of times when it comes to working with databases, there's a, a unique URL that you create to connect to any kind of database. And there's a specific format for that. And the format for that is actually pretty simple. So go to database PY, and then I'm going to create a variable called uh, SQL alchemy underscore database underscore URL. So this is going to be a regular string. Uh, and the structure of the URL for a Postgres database, it's going to be PostgreSQL, because that's the type of database, colon, slash, slash. Then we have the username that you have to put in, colon. Then we have the password. And then we do at, and then this is going to be the IP address. I'll say IP dash address slash host name, whichever one you're using. In our case, that's going to be localhost. And then you have to provide the database name that you want to connect to. So that's the format of a uh, connection string that we have to pass into SQL Alchemy. And then what we do is we say we have to create a engine. So the engine is what's responsible. Uh, for SQL Alchemy to connect to a Postgres database. So you do engine equals, and then we're going to reference this create engine. And then we pass in our connection string. So we'll say SQL Alchemy database URL. However, this is not filled in yet, so we're going to fill in this data. So go ahead and put in your username. So if you haven't created a custom user, it's going to default to Postgres. Put in your password. So we'll do password123 for me. The IP address slash host name. This is going to be localhost. And then the database name, this is going to be 
fast API or whatever you created your database as. So that's our connection string. And like I mentioned before, it's never good to hard code this value somewhere in your code because now you've got your password stored in your code and it's gonna get checked into GitHub and then anyone can see it. So this is bad practice. However, we will change this in the future. All right, so like I said, the engine is responsible for um, establishing that connection. However, when you actually wanna to talk to the SQL database, we have to make use of a session. So we do uh, session local equals session maker. And then we just pass in a couple of values. So auto commit false, auto flush equals false, and then bind equals engine. All right, and all of these values, these are just some default values. Now keep in mind when you're creating the, uh, when, you use, when you use the uh, create engine function, uh, if you are using a SQLite database, you have to pass in this option. Uh, as the second parameter. So you do the database URL and then you do connection args equals check same thread equals false. This is something that's exclusive to the SQLite because it's, I guess it's just running in memory. You don't need to do this for Postgres. You don't need to do it for any other SQL based database. And then you can see in the documentation, this is what the uh, connection string will look like. So it's just confirming what I already showed you guys. And so we can just kind of keep scrolling down and we don't really need anything else. Uh, except for this last line right here. So we here, we have to define our base class. Uh, and so all of the models that we define to actually create our tables in Postgres, they're gonna be extending this base class. So we could just copy this and then paste it into here. And when I was first doing all of this, you know, it was a little confusing and overwhelming. Just think about that. Just for now, I want you to assume that it's more of just a, cut and paste job. It's just a copy and paste. The only thing that really matters that you're going to be changing is going to be that Postgres URL, but everything else for pretty much every project, you can just copy and paste to this entire code. And now within our database.py file, that's all we have to do. The next thing that we want to do is define our tables. Like I said, with an ORM, we no longer have to create tables within PG admin or any CLI utility. We can define it as a Python model. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. And this is going to store all of our models. We'll, and we'll call this models.py. So every model represents a table in our database. And what we're actually going to do is uh, let's take a look at our database and let's see how we can define this as a model within Python. So the first things first, we got to import a few things. And the main thing that we got to import is from our database file, we have to import base. So let's do import dot database, sorry, this should be from dot database, import base. And then we can go ahead and define our model. So uh, right now where you've been dealing with only working with posts, so we're gonna create a model for posts. And like I said, this is going to actually create the table within Postgres. So what we're actually gonna do is I'm gonna delete this table eventually, and then we're gonna have uh, Python and SQL uh, and my fast API application and SQL Alchemy created for us on the fly. But I'm going to keep this table for now just so we can take a look at all the fields that we have. So here I'm just going to call this post and keep in mind when it comes to classes in Python, you always want to make sure that they're capitalized. And then this has to extend base. So this is that base model from SQL Alchemy and we just have to extend it. And there's a couple things that we have to pass in. The first thing is what do we want to call this table within Postgres? Because we have this class name, which only Python knows, but uh, we can specify a specific name within Postgres. Now our table name right now is called post. So I think we should just keep it at that. So we could say underscore, underscore table name, underscore, underscore equals, and then the name of the table you want. So here we're going to name it posts. And then now we have to define all of the columns. Right, so just like we went within PG admin and went column by column, creating it, specifying all of their constraints and things like that, we're going to do this within, uh, within uh, our Python code. So we'll say the first thing is we want an ID. So we'll say ID equals. And then how do we actually create a column? Well, we have to import something from SQL Alchemy. So we'll say from SQL Alchemy import column. So now I can create a column. 
And then there's a couple of different fields that we have to pass in. So the first thing is, what type of column is it? And so if you go back to our post table and go to properties, right? When we went into columns, the first thing they have to specify is what is the data type? Uh, and so uh, we have access to most of the ones that we see in here. Uh, and But we have to import it from SQL Alchemy first. So the ID column is going to be an integer. And so we have to actually import that. We'll do integer. And now I can pass an integer. And that was a mistake. Let me delete that. And then if we take a look at our ID field, we did say that this was a primary key. So we'll say primary key equals true. And then if you want to, you can also say nullable equals false. All right, so that's the equivalent of doing the not null. All right, then we can define the next column, which is going to be title. And then we call column. This is going to be a string now, but we have to import string from our SQL Alchemy. And once again, this is going to be nullable set to false. So we can't leave that blank. The next column is going to be fairly simple, uh, similar. Uh, we've got content. This is going to be a string, and nullable is going to be set to false. Then we got published. This is going to be a Boolean, but we got to import that from the library. And this one can be left as empty. And if you remember, we set a default value for our publish, so it's always going to be by default set to true if we don't pass in a value. And I believe that's how we do it. However, I'd have to double check just to make sure that's what it is. Now, the last column that we'll need to add is the timestamp, but we're going to hold off on doing that for now. And we're going to leave it as such, and then later we'll come back to um, adding that timestamp in. All right, and so we're pretty much done with our model. And what we want to do is, in our main file, we want to copy this command right here. So this create engine, so this is going to create all of our models. So we'll go to our code. I'm going to go to my main file. And somewhere up top, I'm going to create that right there. However, we have to import the right commands. And so the first thing that we want to import is our model. So we'll do from star import models. And then from our database file, we'll say from dot, which is current directory. So we're going to grab a file from our current directory. We're going to import, sorry, from our database file, we're going to import engine. And so at that point, that is good to go. And then finally, if we go back to our documentation, the last thing that we have to do is we have to create this dependency. So we'll just go ahead and copy this for now and just paste it in here. And we want to import session local as well. And we should no longer get any errors here. And so what this ultimately is going to do is the, the session object is kind of what's responsible for talking with the databases. And so we created this function where we actually get a connection to our database. Uh, or get a session to our database. And so every time we get a request, we're going to get a session. We're going to you know, be able to send SQL statements to it. And then after that request is done, we'll then close it out. Uh, and so it's as much more efficient doing it like this uh, by having one little function. And we can just keep calling this fu function every time we get a request to any of our API endpoints. And so now that we've got our uh, dependency to actually get that session, for all of our path operations where we want to perform some sort of operation on the database, what we're going to do is, with, with inside the path operation function, we're going to pass in another uh, parameter. And it's going to be uh, session equals depends, and then we're going to call this get db function. So what that's ultimately going to do is this line right here. Don't worry too much about it, but like I said, it's going to create that session to our database so that we can perform some operations and then close it once that request is done. And then we can repeat that process for every single one of our path operations. So anytime you send a request to any API endpoint, uh, you're going to have this 
being passed into the path operation function so that we can create that connection and then close it out. And like I said, a lot of this is just copy and paste. So once you write this down, even if you don't really understand it, you don't really have to touch it ever again after that. All right, so let's copy this. And what we're going to do is I'm going to create another uh, route or another path operation just for testing purposes, because I don't want to mess up any of our other code. And so I'll just say at app.get. And this is going to be at slash SQL alchemy. So this is just to test to see if it works. And I'll say def test posts. And then we want to pass in that uh, that code that we just copied right here. However, we don't have a session or depends in this case. So we're going to have to import those. So from our database file, our session is going to be from there. Actually, sorry, that's not actually coming from there, is it? Do we have a session in here? We actually do not have session here. So instead, this is not going to come from there, actually. Instead, we're going to import that from SQL Alchemy. I'll say import SQL Alchemy dot ORM import session. And I realize this should be a from. And then we also have to import the depends method from our fast API library. And so now if we go down to our route, we should get no more errors and it looks good. And then here we're just going to return uh, status success for now. And then finally, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to delete our post table. So I'm going to do a delete prop, hit yes. And we have no more tables now. I can close this out. Sorry, I didn't mean to save that. Close that. Don't save it. All right, now we've got nothing. So let's save everything. And pray to God that there's no errors and so it doesn't look like there's any errors. And uh, just by saving that code and restarting our application, what should have happened is once our code ran and we run this, I believe this should actually create the tables within Postgres. So let's refresh this real quick. I'm going to just right click here, hit refresh. We go under tables. Look at that, guys. We now have our post table, even though we deleted it. So if we take a look at our post table and go under properties, columns, you can see it's got the three columns that we defined, well, four columns that we defined. And that all comes from our models.py. And so we've got the four columns that we defined here. And so uh, if uh, whenever we start our application, SQL Alchemy will check to see if there's a table called posts. If it's there, it's not going to do anything. If it's not there, it's going to go ahead and create it for us based off of what we defined in the model. Now, there's one last thing that I want to do just to kind of clean things up. Uh, in our main.py file, I don't like having this get DB function within here. I want to keep all of my database code, um, all of my database initialization code within my database.py file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut this out, paste it into my database.py file. And then we're going to import this into my main file so that I don't have to uh, have that in my main file cluttering it up because our main file is already fairly large. So for my database file, I can import get underscore DB. And now we no longer need session local because it's showing us it's grayed out. So we can remove that. And at that point, everything should still be working. So just as a, just to double check, I'm going to delete this once again. And then I'm going to save this, which is going to trigger um, a reload of our application. And then once our application reloads, if I refresh my database, it should have created another uh, data, uh, another post table. And it looks like it did. And let's just double check that all of the columns are there. And it looks like they are. So everything looks good. Uh, in the next video, uh, the one thing that we do need to change is that we have to add the created at column. So we'll tackle that in the next video.